Hi, this is multivariable 12.3. We're going to look at contour diagrams. With contour lines, they can be used to show elevations on land. They also can be showed to do elevations on or in the water, too. And then this might be an example of a topographical map. So with this, we can see a lot of little lines. Why I picked this particular one is because I happen to have a place right in about here. That's my house. So here is a contour line. So I am somewhat on top of this hill area within that area. Now the contour lines tell us different elevations for wherever we are. Now if you look at the lake shore down here, what happens as we go up? Well, as we go up, we cross quite a few lines, not a bunch. So this is kind of a slow, gradual elevation up to this hill that we have going up here. Now, if you look over here, look at all these contour lines. Those are all really close together. What does that mean? Well, that means it's a really steep hill that we do have. And same thing with the temperature maps. In between, we can tell approximately what the value is for the height, but right on the contour lines, they're always going to be the same. So if you look right here, this one says 900. So this darkened line is going to be at 900 feet. I'm assuming that's going to be above C, and then this is obviously not C, so the elevation of that lake is kind of high too, so that isn't like crazy uh, going up there. Okay, so this is the elevation, and this is a pretty big hill. This looks like the top of the hill that we do have. Do these contour lines ever cross each other? Certainly doesn't look like it, nor does that make sense. Can 600 feet cross with 900 feet? No, not at the same time. And if you look inside the lake, those are also contour lines, but they're underneath the water. And so once again, if those are close together, we're going to have a pretty steep drop off there. And then if they're spread out more, we're going to have a little bit more gradual drop off. So with these three questions here, I've kind of already answered them. If they're close together, then we're going to be uh, going up a hill very quickly or going down a hill very quickly. If they're far apart, it's more gradual. And can two contour lines of different elevations cross each other? The answer is definitely not. Okay, I posted a Khan Academy video that has great graphics that continues on with contour lines for mathematics. I would appreciate if you look at that one and just uh, see how that goes. I usually don't use Khan Academy videos, but I think this is a good time to use one of these. And then there's a corn example in the textbook. And we would like to relate that to functions of two variables as well. So maybe try those two going forward. What I'm going to pause this and do it then, or else go after this and, and do it after I'm done with this. So let's take different values of C for this. 1, 2, 3, 4 sounds good to me. So if I let 1 equal x squared plus y squared, that's obviously a circle. 2 is equal to x squared plus y squared. So all I'm doing is replacing the z with the 1, 2, and 3. So I have all of these equations. If I graph these now into an overhead view of my xy plane, I'm going to get a radius of 1. Then I'm going to get a radius of square root of 2. Then I'm going to get a radius of square root of 3. I'm going to get a radius of 2, or maybe not so good here. But what's happening to my contour lines as I go out? Well, my contour lines will get closer and closer together. Maybe I haven't done this so well, but uh, that tells me that I'm going to get steeper as I go out. And so then if we do take a three-dimensional view of this paraboloid, it does look like this. And so as I get out here further, this gets much steeper slope. And so then there's my paraboloid that I do have. And we can do cross sections and <clears throat> do different things with that. But like if we went from way out here, maybe 8 and 9, they're going to be very close together. Okay, so that's what's going to be happening. And that's just like the map that we looked at before. 
when those lines are closer together, it's going to be much more steep than, for instance, when it was in here. And that bears out with this graph here as well. The next example says, draw the contour lines for g of xy is equal to 2x minus y plus 1. Well, if we do this for different values of c, we're going to get c is equal to 2x minus y plus 1. And I can go ahead and solve this as well to say that I do have y equal to y equal to 2x plus 1 minus c. That tells me that for various values of c, I'm going to have a slope of 2 and then some y-intercept of y, uh, 1 minus c. So if I go ahead and graph this in the xy plane, first of all, slope of 2 means that I'm going to have something like this. And then I'm going to have repetitive slopes of 2. Now what's going to happen for each one of these values, I'm going to have a different value of c for each one of these. So for instance, this would be a c value of 1 because 1 minus 1 gives me a 0, so that's going to be my y-intercept. This one here would be c is equal to 2. So if I plug in 2 into here, then I'm going to get negative 1. That would be my y-intercept here. And then this would be c equal to 0, c equal to negative 1, so on. Now think about what this means. In the contour map, framework, c equal to 2 means that my z value is equal to 2. So when you see this line, my z value would be 2. For this one here, my z value would be 1 when I do see this particular line here. So you have to figure out where your elevation is relative to each one of these when you go to three dimensions. So your contour lines, this might be, okay, this is my elevation of 2, this is my elevation of 1, this is my elevation of 0, and this is my elevation of negative 1, so on. So those are contour lines. They're equally spread because the plane will just be steady eddy as far as the decrease amount that it goes down. Uh, so if you roll a ball off there, it never speed, well, it will speed up because of gravity, but it never has a slope that will be different on that plane if you're going in one direction. This section has a lot of examples in the text for this. You can try the problems and maybe go back to these examples or else just read through the examples and see how you need to deal with these problems. So here's the gift for this unit and try some of the money problems or try um, some of the other things. A lot of times we have physics in these problems too but not in this one. All right, I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.